So we're underway with the final of the Women's Open Division. And we've got two sharp running in the pink up against the Bullets, who are in the white strip. Two of the teams that were, uh, I, I guess, fancy to make their way through to the final. And that's the way it has unfolded. But we're in for a classic match here this afternoon and calling the shots from the sideline to Kohoi Wano. We haven't seen the Bullets, but we certainly saw two sharp earlier in the tournament. And these two teams did play in the Friday night shootout here in Whakatane. So two evenly matched teams from the same rule here both from counties Monaco, which is one of the strongholds of the touch scene. TK, this should be a fizzer. Oh, kaore e kore e hoa, uh, me te mōhio ko counties Monaco te tino rohe o te pā pāuru i nēnei rā. Hari te me ohorere ko uru mai i nei o ngā kapa e rua, two sharp bullets. Nō reira, pērā i ngā whiringa toa katoa, kaore e kore ka kite ko te tahi pakanganui. And of course, uh, Grant Edmonds, uh, who is the coach of the New Zealand under-19 under women's team. Mate, uh, as we can see, this is the cream of the crop out. He's got a lot of national players uh, on show. Yeah, on both sides there. Uh, Dale, you've got both teams uh, stacked full of uh, New Zealand and uh, provincial representatives. Um, you know, look for a good, evenly matched competition and uh, look, also look for the likes of Christina Sue, uh, Renee Wycliffe, Rhonda Peters for the Bullets, and also Natalie Clark, Janie Weehorni, and also Teida Tiaho, um, number 13. Some good players out there and about at the moment. So the ball's played to one of them, Stacey Smallman. That's her in strip number four. And he's just gone into dummy half on the far side of the field. Running from left to right is Too Sharp, who found their way into the final with wins over Isotonic in the early stages of the tournament, 3-2. Then they picked off the new green by 4-0 and eventually knocked over the blitz 2-0 in pool play as they try to make their way through the gap that's Janet Clark. In the semi-final, it was a win over the quickies by 3-2 to put Two Sharp into the final against the Bullets. Yeah, Two Sharp beat last year's winners uh, quickies in that semi-final, so that'll be sweet revenge for themselves, but they'll look, be looking to go one better this year, Dale. Bullets uh, made the uh, crucial touch there on the fifth and final and look to be looking to bring the ball outside their own end. Good, good go forward there by Ashlyn Inosa. Jordan Rogers Ryan out there to number eight. That would be Lachelle Nawini. So bullets in possession now. 12 minutes short of the halfway. Some uh, good inroads being made as well. Now it's all about pace. This is the Open Women's Final. These are national representatives. So we can expect the pace to be significantly faster than what you'll find in the restricted grades. Good touch made on the number one, Renee Whitcliffe. And uh, too sharp in possession. Now 10 short of the halfway. Yeah, definitely. The too sharp, you know, bringing the ball towards their sub box and looking to rotate their subs early. Now, a weakness for the women's game would be that if you bring it over too early, too quickly and not get your subs on, it could isolate yourself. So if I was bullets, I'll be looking to push up into the midfield and isolate and push them back into that sub box and leave them stranded. Shani to Dudley with the ball now. She's got a runner on her inside, Jody Tupaya. Dudley. Good ball, looking for the quick pass as well was Alana Diamond. Brown has played very well, but the uh, Bullets were able to force the turnover. They take possession five out from their line. A bit like boxing, they're just sorting each other out in the early stages of this final. Engari ko te pakaritanga o ngā kapa e rua ka kitea, no reira kaore e kore ka piritata. This will be a very, very close final. So the Bullets rolling on forward. Plenty of skills on show. 12 is Ashlyn in Nosa. There's a goose step there, shown as well. There's Christina Sue, yep. It, it may only equate to around about three games of touch when you put six games, or sorry, two and a half games when you put 25 minutes times times five. But it's the stop-start nature of the day. You play your first game, you've got an hour to wait before your next, and then you play again, and it, it's whoever gets up. It's about enthusiasm levels in that first 10 minutes or so. Because remember, we don't have a half-time break where the coach can get in there and say, hey, look, we need to fire up. Got to do it right from the outset. Tammy Thompson involved in the middle, Ashley Dunlop Hogan. That's her in strip number 12. Just passed the ball then, but of course uh, managed to avoid the mark. The bullets in possession, just out from their own line. That's easy meter on the far side of the field. Uh, Coral Easton, good renown for her yardage game and also her her ability to dive on the line. There's the, the tummy tuck again, as we see, used to good effect. <laughs> And quickly out of the line, touch made. Coming around in the back, uh, Billie Jean Ailey. Yeah, Bullets have got to go be a little bit more direct here. That's a good Renee run got to have a go. From Billie Jean, now it's Renee. Turnover once again. Still no score in the final. 25 minutes of action here in the 23rd annual Whakatane Touch Tournament.
Yeah, bullets aren't pushing up off their line. They're giving them away easy meters. They need to work hard on defense. But again, it's an attitude thing. You've got to want to defend. You want to keep your opposition away from your line as much as possible. Not sit back the 10 meters or the 5 meters and let them come to you. Small win with a good powerful run. Now Natalie Clark goes into the dummy half. Holds up momentarily. Whips the ball across the field to Janie Wehornick. Janie throws the dummy, but the bullets awake to that game. These players would have come ag up against each other many times. So, you know, they're, they're well in tune with what skill sets their opponents have. It's just uh, who affects the game plan more. Who's more efficient. More accurately, I guess. Yeah. And it's about who does something out of the ordinary. You can't, you know, everyone knows each other. Everyone knows what they're capable of. And Renee's right foot step, for example. You know, so everyone's waiting for it to happen. It's, it's about what can you pull out of the bag that someone hasn't seen before. Be unpredictable. Because so we have the prize giving coming up. And they'll name, no doubt, players of the tournament have uh, been cut selectors around. <laughs> oh, there is a trans-Tasman for the open woman next year and the open men, open mix. Uh, it's a duel, uh, one in, I think it's May, and then uh, a return series um, in November. On attack we come again. It's Jenna sorry. Clark with the wheels on. Back to Smallman. Stacey Smallman's actually been impressive today. Been a good contributor to the uh, two sharp efforts uh, through the tournament. And uh, now with the ball is Natalie Clark. Ball ball out to nine. Shani to Dudley. Dudley picks up to Paya. That's Tupaya, put to a by her opposite number as they're getting close, but the number one is sent back, Diamond Brand. Yeah, hua ma. Ka kite a ko te tini o ngā tāngata e ko umai ki te mā takitaki mai ki tēnei kēmu ka tika mea mihi ki whakatāne nui tunu ki ngāti awa iwi. Mā tātua, they've turned out to support this event, and it's probably a very good reason why it's been continuing on for 23 years. Yeah, you've got to pay tribute to the, the people of Ngāti Awa. Far side of the field, and the pass is deemed forward. Yeah, no, that was a, a, a forward pass there outside to Coral Easton. But uh, Bullets need to consolidate and get field position. They need to be able to keep the opposition stuck down in their own half. At the moment, the game's been played at the wrong end for them. But on this positive, Too Sharp are making the most of their opportunities. If it doesn't come now, it'll come soon. And I think they're probably a little bit more threatening, probably 10 metres out, 15 rather than 5. 12's Ashley Dunlop Hogan, and the green strip is Dudley, Shanita. Far side of the field, 10 is Cecily Stainton. That's her with the ball now. Stainton will lay it down for Dudley. Dudley towards the in goal, the flick back behind. Taps a hand, then it's on to a runner. Now the wheels are not going to be there for that runner, but the ball across, which really should have been picked up by Billy Jean earlier, sadly. Goes a miss, goes awry, and now the bullets are forced to defend. Yeah, again, they sh should have held that pass, I think, and maybe play out the set of six and try and get the ball up the other end. I just don't see enough urgency from bullets. They're probably going to win it on individualism by alone if, if that's the way it goes. But there's a lot of structure coming out of two sharp. Janie Weehorny, number seven, you know, setting up play, looking to use her scooping ability and also her right foot step, TK. Koya, koya, ka kitea ko te mahi tahitanga te kapa māwhero. Engari mō bullets, they've had two clear opportunities that they've uh, failed to seize and that may count against them later on in this game. Christina Sue with a good touch there, holding off what looked to be a rampant attack by the two sharp team and again the touch is made, turnover affected. Bullets in possession now, just out from their own line. The run through comes from Christina Sue. Sue plays it quickly. That's better roll on as they angle towards the subs box on the far side of the field and use that with the replacements coming on two at a time. Number one through is Renee Whitcliffe. Whitcliffe now. Five past the, uh, or into the half of two sharp. And we're going to play it down. Fell quite heavily, the number six. She's to her feet, making her way to the sub bench now. Two sharp in possession. This is Clark, Jenna Clark, who's been very impressive throughout the tournament. Yeah, they did the right thing there with Coral Easton scooping on maybe three or four on the touch count, but they're just not showing any enthusiasm on defence. They're standing back on the five metres that the referee pulls them back and allowing two sharp easy five seven meters eight meters every time they take the ball forward it's just not what they need to be doing they need to get the ball up on their five and get too sharp under a bit of pressure at the moment all the pressure is on bullets Ashley Dunlop Hogan has the ball and in fact it's turned over back down to the bullets 12 is Ashton Enosa which is Ashton
got some wheels if they can create some space for her out wide through the middle they come this is where your uh, your meter inch is gained with quick plants and scoops three at a time but at the moment they're just doing one on ones and twos and not getting the sort of roll on that Jean Waka Iraya who is the coach of the bullets would have hoped for number three with it is Crystal Rota she's touched Stacey Smallwood will play the ball on the far side of the field she's in possession of it right now yeah, coach is looking on again if, and I don't mean to keep pulling on this point this is the only time so now they've got field position. Now they've got their opportunity because someone was able to be positive in going up and make the touch and force the issue. Now they've got their first set of six inside the opposition tar. What they have to do now is get it up onto the five. Don't worry about trying to score. Get it up on the five. Have a go. If it doesn't come off, keep them there. Feel pressure. To know where the number eight is, Michelle now winning. That's her in dummy half. Across to the bullets now through Wycliffe. Renee Wycliffe. Touches made effectively too by Natalie Clark. Here come the bullets now. What have they got in their attacking armory? Wycliffe will play the ball. She gets it back to the number eight. This is Ngawini. Wycliffe again. Ngawini is waiting for her opportunity. Here's the quickie from Ngawini. And the dive for the line. Referee checks to see if the touch was made. It was not made. The bullets are in for the touchdown number one. One nil. Over two sharp. Yeah, exactly what we were trying to allude to, Dale. You know, they got their first opportunity inside their half, and Renee Wycliffe takes responsibility. This is probably her bread and butter. Getting the ball off a quickie, right, right foot step, dive underneath, and the ball down before the touch. And that just illustrates what a threat they can be when they get on the five. They just have to get there first. <laughs> Too sharp now. No, they're in for a game. Through the middle they come. This time through Ashley Dunlop Hogan. Lays it on. Picks up three. Clark. Clark keeps it hot. And on to Tupaya. Tupaya is forced to take the touch. Picked up by Diamond Brown. They work infield now. Ten is Stainton. Stainton with the wide ball. And picks up Dunlop Hogan on the far side of the field. Out of dummy half. Jenna Clark. That ball's gone up. Comes down. Bullets ball. Still 1-0. So we've just seen with two sharp and that last attacking play after Bullets had scored, just lacking a little bit of um, direction really on that five metre line. So, but they get another opportunity after a mistake, obviously from the Bullets. If you've just joined us, you're watching action from the final of the Open Women's Division here in Fakatane Touch 09, and the two teams playing. Two sharp against Bullets, two sharp with the pink running left and right. Scoreline at the moment, 1-0 in favour of the Bullets. Both teams from counties Monaco, but there's plenty of rivalry. Touch first, guys. Touch first. Jenna Clark reaching out for the touchdown zone. Hold here, forced to pick the ball up and start again, five metres out. Three, guys. Here they go. They're setting up for something now. Watch for the quickies between the... Tackled player and the no. dummy half. It was a very poor ball. I don't think that was what was needed. Then they just got to keep the ball on Natalie Clark and just get them to dump for her and get her to have a go at a dummy half. I think that's their best option so far. They seem to lack leadership when she's off the field. And Janie Wehonley does her best when she gets on there, but obviously with her knee heavily strapped, it's hindering her a little bit. I met the man who uh, too sharp. Uh, they, they appear like they're playing like they've only got a few more minutes left so you know they've got plenty of time um, and now's the time that they need to show their maturity and experience well this is where the fitness comes into it doesn't it it's been a big day as uh, uh, Lara Diamond Brown is picked off angling the runner Chantel Dudley Dudley lays it on picks up Tupaya Tupaya keeps it hot and it's out to Jamie Weehornet back on the inside to Dudley Dudley gets it onto Tupaya once again. So good combinations between these three. Looking for a quickie here. Uh, There's a wide ball. Oh, and the pass try. is pinpoint accurate. Two sharp around. Yeah, no, that was definitely, a, that was what we were talking about earlier. It's get away from doing the same things that you're used to and try something that's unpredictable. And here, the first time we've seen them throw the ball wide, Jody Tupaya giving it out. And then the long ball comes along and, you know, we've caught them out, cause an effect. Do the quickies. Now look to go spin it a little bit wider. One all the scoreline in the final, TK. Oh. Just the length of that pass just shows how this woman's game's developed. 
it's just like a, a, a pass you'd expect from a Benji Marshall. Brilliant pass. Yeah, good stuff too. And they, they could sense the opportunity out there, the unmarked player. But the, the pass had to be right on the money. And it certainly was. Back with a great hold and then a dive. Oh, they thought the ball had gone down. Christina Sue is able to hold on to the ball. How she did it, I will not know. But she's able to get it underneath. It's 2-1 bullets yeah. over the two sharp squad. Good pass there for Coral Easton. This is what we call a trick scene. The dummy has to play the ball one way, throw the ball the other. And Christina Sue was able to hold on to it and go and dive underneath. That was a great try. And Coral Easton's strength is throwing that long ball to the right. I think that fumble made a difference too, just caused the defence to hesitate but hang off and that allowed the try to happen. Very they, much so. They thought that the ball was going to ground, so it was quite brilliant effort by Christina Sue. 2-1 is the scoreline of the final. Bullets take the lead. Now with Stacey Smallwood, she's seven or eight metres out as they just back up there and try and coordinate their attack. It's no use going in there willy-nilly. You must have some sort of structure and plan, otherwise you'll be picked off very easily by an experienced defensive line that the Bullets have on the field at the moment. They've had two opportunities on the five metre line. They've come away with two touchdowns and I think that's starting to show, you know, it's the story of the game. Um, they just need a sniff and we too sharp can't afford to give it to them because they've got too many quality players in their lineup and they don't rely on one or two players to do it for them. But too sharp aren't out of this. They're more than willing and more than able. They just got to play more constructive touch. Stacey Smallman get them going forward, you know, um, get Tadia Tiaho that two game. Uh, Natalie Clark shouldn't be doing this. She should be staying out, getting everyone else to tire themselves out, save herself fresh so that she can have a go on the fifth and final. They look like they're a pretty fit team, this uh, Bullets outfit. There's a good scoop and a great run. Pick up ball now from eight. Tammy Thompson sends it across and finds Dudley. Dudley, now, bullet pass again. It's out to Tahoe. They look for that one wide that... Uh, worked fortuitously for them a few moments ago. It doesn't come up trumps this time. Hey, then they were angry. Qua qua kite a chui te waru o te kapa o two sharp. Kai te aki aki arato ano. They're urging each other, trying to pick each other up to get that vital try to put them back in this game. Two one scoreline. It's been very very entertaining final in the open women's division here at Fakatane. Bullets in possession and a strong run from Billie Jean Alia, who looks to me as though she's got some wheels if they can find a hole for her to go. Well, she's another member of the uh, Kiwi Fern side that won the World Cup in November uh, last year. So Billie Jean Ali, Christina Sue, and someone who's not taken the field yet is Ronald Peters, who obviously must be injured. She's got her ankle heavily strapped over there in the sub box. Yeah, the inside ball to Crystal Rota doesn't stick, and now it's with two sharp. They too are uh, guilty of indiscretions, unforced errors, if you will. And the ball has gone to ground, giving Bullets once again an opportunity, but in two sharps half. Oh, it, it, it tohu wera o te nge nge tanga o te tangata. We've seen two basic mistakes made from both sides. Maybe a reflection of tiredness. And it's going to be vital in the last few minutes for this game. Very much so. Five takes it forward. This is Ella here, Nathan. And now it's, it's worked wide and it picks up Hilo Peters. Peters back now for Wycliffe. Yeah, watch through the Renee middle. Here. Renee Wycliffe got plenty of wheels. Good little interplay there with Crystal Rota. Wycliffe Rota dives. Missed touch there by Teadia Tiaho. Allowed uh, Rota to dive, uh, Runa to dive underneath. Oh, sorry, Peters to dive underneath. Um, good honesty call there, especially in the final when you've got lots to play for. And here we go. Wycliffe and then to Peters. And there's the missed touch or the no touch and it's a touchdown. A good call by the referee. Uh, definitely bullets have got a big advantage two up with um, with time running out for two sharp and good test for these top groups whether they can top teams whether they can come back and two sharps got a big test in front of them right right now very much if they're up for a challenge well this is certainly what they're looking at now down by two and they clock their enemy as the bullet look to just consolidate through the middle they're up by two. They don't need to play anything overly ambitious. Just a steady hand would will win them the final. Yeah, they uh, won the final last night in the shootout, as we covered. And they beat two sharp in the um, shootout as well. But that's three opportunities that Bullets have had inside the um, opposition's territory. And there's three touchdowns they've come away with. So, you know, just in terms of what they have to offer with ball in hand is, is, is complementing each other. And it's a good, strong side. And a good, solid uh, effort. Now, two sharp realizing that the clock is against them and they really need to turn it on now angling for the uh for the subs bench is jody tupaya now with the ball comes natalie clark one of the most experienced in the team needs to lead from the front chantelle dudley now it comes go back natalie, into the hands go. of malay 
Now two sharp, heading to the end zone. Inside ball, finding Lana Diamond Brown, but she too couldn't hold on, but they will get the ball once again for the final. Big play by Coral Easton, just there defensively to stop, cut off that move. Natalie Clark didn't use the ball as they might have liked. Turnover, Bullets take possession, five out from their own line. Yeah, just apologies before. There was Crystal Rota that scored the last touchdown for the Bullets. So I do apologize, Crystal. Good go forward there by Coral Easton. Christina Sue taking the ball forward, creating opportunities here for Renee Wycliffe. Beautifully weighted passing there, and that's an example of passing to the hole. You hear it time and time again. Run at the gaps, don't run at the man. Yep. And it's just a matter of weighting the ball accurately into that hole and for the uh, the player coming through to pick it up on the way through. Here we go once again. It's the yeah. referee appealing to the referees, Renee Wickliffe. She's a, a, a skillful player, Renee. Yeah, she's uh, just come back from overseas, uh, Dale. She... Uh, took up a rugby contract over in England, playing a bit of rugby over there, and uh, has only just back, come back into the country late, late last year, and back into playing touch again. Of course, touch, always uh, anticipating greatly the Tasman clashes. And we know that our youth teams have done really well against the Osbos in recent years, not so much our adult teams. And Grant uh, explained that saying that the Australians, it's a year-round sport for them, and many of the top players in the Open Division in their late 20s, whereas our players tend to be at their best in their, uh, well, I guess, uh, as they're approaching 20 and just beyond. But, um, well, things might change in time. Kofai Wahanga are too sharp, hit their rohe or bullets, no later they need to score right now and they've got an opportunity after that turnover yeah definitely Janie Wehone with the ball now up the middle comes Tammy Thompson trying to set it up there for Lana, Lana Diamond Brown a small one on the far side of the field they're down by two and need to get over the line very soon seven is Wehone once again Wehone will play and look for a quickie here Wehone back on the inside Diamond Brown and, good uh, call by the referee yeah, as you were saying before, Dale, uh, the Australians get to play the game year-round because of their weather conditions um, and also because of the light. So they have a very heavy summer program and they have a very successful winter program. So their touch athletes get to play the, tour, uh, their, the sport all year-round, whereas we probably don't have that luxury with the fields. Hello, Peters thought for a moment she had got through the hole, but that close, quickly touch was made. Five short of halfway, bullets up by two with the ball. Try scorer or touchdown maker. Crystal Rota, again, brilliant hands, shown there by Jordan Rogers Rhines. Te no pai ngā ringa ringa, pōhe kwa maka whakamua, engari pupuri tia tonu tia, pō anu ko whai wahi anō anei rā Ashton Enoka. Up the middle, some strong stepping, Ashton Enoka looking for a pick-up, needs a pick-up, and gets the nice ball away to the number 12 to Ashton Enosa. Yeah, Laurelie Nathan there, number nine, picking the ball up out of dummy half. Just having to go at the line, just getting the referee to put him in two minds. Either she's going to call a touch or say play through. Straight through she goes, referee says play on for advantage and picks up number 12, Ashlyn Nenosa, to score the final touchdown. That makes it 4-1. All right. Well, too sharp. Well, sorry. Uh, uh, Noho Wahangu to Kapanei or... Uh, or too sharp, very quiet bench down here. So they're looking for answers and they're running out of time. And running out of steam a bit, but that's to be expected. These guys have played a lot of ball and uh, it was always going to come down to fitness levels in the final. And certainly the bullets have uh, looked like we didn't see them during our coverage uh, bar the Friday night shootout. And so they've been going about their work quietly, the bullets with wins over Usain Bolt and the quickies and blitz to make their way into the final. Too sharp through isotonic new breed blitz and, uh, and Quickie's also making their way to this final. As Christina Sue flicks the ball on and finds Coral Easton on the far side of the field. So the bullets up by four to one. And this, the final of the Open Women's Division at Whakatane Touch 09. Watch Wycliffe here. Right out, foot. Out of dummy well, half. Goose, goose step, you she's mentioned gone. that's what she's yeah, about. Yeah, that's what she's about. Right foot step, shows it, and then gives the big goose. And then to finish it off there was number 11. Hilda Peters should be happy with that. Renee Wycliffe has just stamped her class all over this game. 
and it's just uh, just reading the body language here from Too Sharp. They know they've had a tough day's tournament, and Bullets still look like they can play another two or three games. Yeah, the Bullets coming on with a completely new lineup, placing six at once. And I'm going to apologise to Hilda Peters because the way it's um, written, I thought it was He Law. I call it <laughs> He Law Peters. But anyway, Hilda, big effort. Played strong. This through the middle comes 14. Jenna Clark. Touch has been made. And uh, she'll be disappointed there because it looks like she's sprained her ankle. 50 that. In fact, it's very, very sore by the looks of things. Yeah, I'd just like to give a big uh, shout out to our referees for this final, Kitty Martin, Rochelle Tamarua, and Louise Rua. What a, what a great game. Congratulations to Bullets and commiserations to Too Sharp. Uh, yeah, and a good win for the Bullets team. An impressive display. Stacked full of national players, but so were their opponents. And these players meet regularly in the county's Monaco region, south of uh, Tamaki Makoto, up there, Auckland City and they know their game as well, but the uh, game played in good spirit. But in the end, as you know, there can be but one winner here at the Whakatane Touch, and the Bullets with a very comprehensive victory in the final, taking out two sharp by five to one.